We're going to begin just a moment with our the felony arraignment, criminal felony arraignment. Uh, one uh, one point to make sure that the people that are here, uh, I note on the docket that upwards of half of the of the defendants that are here today do not have an attorney. If you don't have an attorney, as a general rule, um, first of all, you need to get an attorney if you've got a felony charge against you. That's that's pretty much common sense. Um, but you will be, uh, if you don't have an attorney here today for today's, the purpose of today's hearing is only to make a plea. And so if you don't have an attorney, what I'm going to do I'm going to offer you an attorney to have an attorney appointed. Of course, you have to qualify, etc. But if you do not have an attorney, I would strongly suggest that you accept the court's offer of a public defender. And I'm going to go ahead and enter a not guilty plea on your behalf so that you then have an opportunity to meet with your attorney before taking any, uh, what I would say, substantive action on your case so um, anyway so when your name is called if you would quickly try and walk down to the well and we will take each case in order uh, from that point um, mr. Powell you want to get do you have your client you want to I know you were on this morning's docket but you were Occupied? That's all right. We're all busy. This is uh, Paul St. Ani, Judge. Case number uh, 21, 27, 37, and 22, 302. Correct. We've got an agreement, Judge. Can we approach? Sure. Thank you. Okay, very good. And, and the defense is in agreement on the score sheet? Okay. Would you go ahead and, and outline the terms of the plea agreement, and I'll review it as you go along. All right. Thank you, Judge. This is Gil Powell on behalf of Paul St. Ani, case number 2021-2737-2022, CF-302. Uh, based on an agreement with the state, the defense, the defendant will reserve six months community control, followed by three and a half years probation, a total of four years altogether of supervision. Uh, the state agrees that the defendant may go on his vacation that he's already paid for and planned for in December. I think he's leaving December 26th, for eight days. And we got to put that on the record to, or to, as probation requested. And uh, that's basically it. We would like the court to waive the administrative supervision cost, uh, if possible. And, uh, Mr. Powell, I believe you did not include the fact there does need to be a GPS. Yeah, that's right. And we have no objection to setting that a dollar of a day, but that, of course, that's the court's discretion. Um, we also have no objection to the previously planned vacation, so long as he is in compliance with requirements of probation and parole as far as any reporting requirements. Okay. You know, this is a downward departure based on course plea. Additionally, just for the court's knowledge, we did review the totality of the circumstances of the violations and his compliance over the years. We believe it's appropriate in this case. Okay. And for the record, Judge, he's went 18 years uh, without failing to report. He, he was 14 days late on this one. He's had six internet things already registered. Uh, he forgot to register TikTok. He didn't know it was there, but that was a violation. Okay. I would just ask Mr. Powell if you would go and, and just clarify, put the GPS included in there, and then waive the cost of supervision. I just want to have you. You want me to write it on? Yeah, there? if you would. Mr. St. Ange, would you please raise your right hand? Do you swear or affirm that the information you're about to provide this court is the truth, nothing but the truth, so I help you God? Sir. So I just want to make sure you, you understand what you're doing here. 
and that you're entering into it free, freely and voluntarily. You heard your attorney state the terms of the plea agreement. Sir. Is that your understanding? Is that what you're agreeing to? Yes. And I was just looking at the, um, the, the actual written plea and sentencing agreement. Have you gone over this with your attorney to make sure all the legal ramifications that you understand? Yes, sir. Because there, it does have some significant legal, obviously you're on, on probation and community control, but also, you know, it impacts your record and you're waiving some valuable legal rights by entering into this. I, the main one is going to trial and the right to confront witnesses, etc. So you understand all that? I do, sir. You believe it's in your best interest to enter into this plea agreement? Okay. Very good. <clears throat> Based upon that, then the court will accept the plea agreement as stated with the downward departure based upon the, the state's agreement and um, the, the history, which is really the reason for it, as you understand it. The court will um, order for both counts um, three and a half years. Well, it's six months of community control followed by three and a half years of regular probation. So it's a total of four years. I assume they'll go for each of the two counts. They'll run concurrent? Yes, sir. That was our intent. Okay. And then waive the cost of supervision, and there will be a GPS monitor that is required uh, during the terms of this probation and community control. You understand all that? Yes, sir. Yes, okay. Standard court cost judge and $100 cost of prosecution. That's correct. Okay. That's all, Thank you, Your Honor. Thank, Thank you very much. Your Honor, I Yes. I heard Thank Mr. Powell reference something about him being allowed to go on a trip. Yes. Okay. And then I tried to I think there were some dates thrown around there. Twenty six. Let's make sure we get that right. He's on community control and we're gonna have to we need to make sure and clarify this so that the, the they can properly keep him on probation. Okay. okay. I think the wording we would like to use, Judge, if yes, you sir. will, is uh, he's on community control except for this pre-planned trip that's scheduled to leave December 26th of this year for... When would he return? When would you return, sir? The 30th. Sir. There you go. The 30th of... No, 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 no. When is your trip? So you leave on what date? You're supposed to leave the day after Christmas on the 26th. And return on the 30th? Yes, sir. Okay. So that's not eight days. So that's even shorter. Okay. And, and, Your Honor, with that, you're giving us the authority to allow him to travel for this, even though he's on community control? That is correct. Okay. And based, that is based upon agreement by the state for these unique circumstances. <laughs> Going or sure. That's all this okay. Is Disney a problem? Uh, not for me. <laughs> Might be for him when he gets down there. Because he can't be around children. How are you going to conduct a trip there in they Disney World? Scan your ID now, Dace. And if, it, if it's registered, they won't let you in. I don't know that. I'm just letting the court know that. Okay. So we're going December 16. I mean December 26 through December 30. Right. Okay. Thank you. Is that when you come back? Okay, I appreciate those questions, Mr. Barry. We need to get those clarified. No, I, I, I appreciate you, uh, you making sure it's clear so nobody else, nobody gets in trouble unnecessarily. That's what we're trying to avoid. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so we'll begin with our, our felony plea docket, and we'll start with uh, Miranda Ballantyne. You'll just come up to this podium here, ma'am, and with the state announced, please. Ms. Ballantyne is before the court on 22 CF 1807. Uh, the state has not yet filed on this case. We are waiting for the urine results. Okay. So, 
Do we want to go ahead and appoint and then come back? Yes, Your Honor. Okay, so we're going to continue this. When's our next arraignment? Uh, the 20th, September 20th. So we're going to continue this arraignment until September 29th. And we'll appoint. Do you want to? I, I jumped out. Do you want to have the public defender appointed? Yes. So we'll appoint the public defender and then you can meet with him and just make a plea at that time. If you have an application for the don't downstairs is the clerk's office if you haven't done the application. Earl, Earl Griffin. Yeah. Hinesley. Okay, absolutely. We're going to go just a little bit out of order to accommodate the the uh, couple of the prisoners, a couple of the inmates. We're going to jump ahead. We're going to do Farrell, which is number 12 on our docket. Stand by that podium, sir. Could the state announce? Yes, Your Honor. Mr. Farrell's before the court on 22 CF 2036. He's charged with one count of resisting an officer with violence, petty theft, and criminal mischief. Okay, Mr. Farrell, you do have a right to an attorney with these charges. You wish to have an attorney appointed? Yes, sir. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and appoint you a public defender. This is just an arraignment today to make a plea. I'm going to go ahead and enter a not guilty on your behalf so you get a chance to meet with your attorney before taking any substantive action. Your attorney will likely be Ms. Etheridge, so she'll okay. come see you as soon as she can, okay? I will go back to court. I'm sorry. Mr. Gibbs, it, it didn't... Yeah, you'll get another, you just got another court date. Um, not today. He researched... Uh, that was uh, 26th, right, Your Honor? I'm really sorry? That was October 26th, Your Honor? That well, y yes. Okay. I can't get an R and R. In. So, Mr. Etheridge will come talk to you and, and talk to you about Continue that. Continue until the pre-trial on October 26. <laughs> Charles Griffin. This is, this is Miss Etheridge's case as well. So this is Charles Hall, uh, covering for Miss uh, Etheridge. I have a note on here to be asked to ask for a bond hearing for potentially an ROR. I understand just from looking at the file that there seems to be a drop charge affidavit from the uh, victim in the case. Request for bond hearing has not been filed. The state would request that they follow procedure. I would. I would agree. We've got to file something before we we go. So you want to. Just enter a plea today, I assume. Yeah, just enter a plea of not guilty. So the court will enter a plea of not guilty. And if if you do file the a bond, you can get it. You can advance it in one of the miscellaneous dates. Okay. Okay. No but we'll, short of that, you'll come back on October 26th for pretrial. So the hearing between there. Thank you, Judge. Thank you very much. Hinesley. Cody Hinesley? Would the state announce? Cody Hinesley is before the court on 22 CF 1909. He is charged with burglary of an occupied dwelling and criminal mischief. Afternoon, Mr. Hinesley. Uh, you do have a right to have an attorney appointed. You wish to have an attorney appointed in this case? Yes? Okay. The court will appoint the public defender. The court's going to enter a not guilty plea. And we'll come back on October 26th. At 9 a.m. Come see you as soon as you can, okay? That's your copy. That's officially what you're charged with. Um, and then she'll come see you and talk about it. Okay. Would 
Would council approach real quick? Okay, so uh, Emil Batson, go back to the top. Emil Batson. Who do you have ready, Marty? Okay. I'll tell you what, we'll do a few of these others and then we'll come back on that. Okay. okay. Jeffrey Brown. Jeffrey Brown. The state announce and the honor, uh, Mr. Brown's case is 22 CF 1911. He is charged with possession of controlled substance, two counts. And not seeing him present, what is the state requesting? KPS, your honor. Court will issue a KPS, no bond. I'm also going to appoint the public defender just again so we don't waste time when we come back. Gregory Carroll. Your Honor, Gregory Carroll's before the court on 22 CF 1986. He is charged with possession of controlled substance, possession of drug paraphernalia, and giving a false name to law enforcement. Your Honor, Tim Gibbs uh, for Mr. Carroll this morning. He'd like to enter not guilty plea, and we can leave this set on pretrial. Very good. The court will enter a not guilty plea set for pretrial October 24th, 9 a.m. Thank okay. you. Jessica Crane. Then we'll do some of the evening. Your Honor, who was that? Um, no attorney. Jessica Crane. Jessica Crane. Ms. Crane. Would you announce, please? Your Honor, Ms. Crane is before the court on 22 CF 2041. She is charged with possession of controlled substance and possession of drug paraphernalia. Okay. Ms. Crane, you do have... i got to ask her first. You do have a right to an attorney... You wish to have an attorney appointed? He assumed you did. You wish to have a public defender appointed? Yes, Your Honor. Okay. The court will appoint the public defender. I'm going to go ahead and enter a not guilty plea, as I said, so you have but, a chance to meet with your attorney. Has she already met with I, you? I, we, we she, she's been extended an offer from yes. the state. That's what that is in front of her. It's I a see. written plea I if she just, wants to take it. Just about to verify and make sure that she wants this offer and so we can uh, execute it real quick. That's fine. This is, on, this is what you just read. Okay. Withhold for the first one. Withhold for the first one. Vacation time served on the second one. Okay. Do you want to do that? Yes. Right okay, here. Just okay. uh, sign and date right here, okay? Yep. 
Um, is there a way I could get, make a payment plan or something until I get a job? Okay. I'll talk with the clerk. <laughs> Thank you. Hold on, hold on. I'm going to have to ask you some questions, ma'am. Go ahead and announce the terms, Council. Or did I just take the only? Take the only copy I have. <laughs> okay. Sorry, it would be it would be credit time served. Court costs of five fifteen, one hundred and one fifty, to be paid within a hundred and eighty days. Okay. There'll be an adjudication of, of withheld as to the possession of a controlled substance and adjudication of guilt on the possession of paraphernalia. That's what I read. Ma'am, would you raise your right hand? Do you swear or affirm that the information you're about to provide this court is the truth and nothing but the truth, so help you God? Yes? Yes. I just need to ask you a few questions to make sure you understand what the plea is and make sure it's free and voluntary. That's why I'm asking these questions. It's the only reason, okay? So you heard your attorney state the terms. You've gone over it with him, the terms of the plea agreement. Is that what you're wanting to do here today? Yes. Are you sure? Yes. Do you need to talk with your attorney anymore? I just want to make sure you understand what's going on here. You seem to be a little hesitant. And I just want to make sure that you're comfortable with this. We can, we can come back on this. There's no rush on this. Council approach. that you're concerned about the payment of the fees so let me explain what it is so you understand this first of all you'll have a full 180 days to pay six months okay you can make a payment plan if you don't pay it within that time it'll go to collections you're not going to be in violation they're not going to pick you up if you don't if it's not paid within that time do you understand that yes sir thank you Okay. Are you comfortable entering into this plea here today? If you're not, we can wait a little bit longer. I don't understand. He keeps quite, I don't understand. What? I already said, I said, yes, please. Yes, Your Honor. I don't, why? they keep well, asking, just, what am doing I doing wrong? Record. Jessica, he's doing I don't it for know the what to say. Jessica, he's doing it for the record. What am I supposed to say? I say yes. Yes. Well, I recommend continuing the case, and that way Ms. Edwards no, can I want to. No, I want to accept it. Yes, please, yes. I just didn't understand. I don't understand. I've never. He's just trying to protect the record. He's trying to put it on the recording and have you auto. auto okay, so we could do it. Do it again. We, okay. 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 Sorry. So, just want to make sure that, that you're comfortable. And you've had all your legal questions because by doing this, you're waiving the you're waiving some valuable legal rights. You're waiving the right to go to a trial, and we're just want to make really what I'm asking you these questions, man, to make sure your rights are protected. Mm -hmm. Okay, you're entering into a plea. You're giving up some rights. You know, it's a fair deal. I'm, I'm going to accept it. Uh, it's a good deal, actually, for you. But I still have to ask you these questions because it still has legal impact on you, okay? So you're comfortable with all this. You've had all your questions answered by your attorney? Yes, Your Honor. Right. Very good. Based upon that testimony, the court will accept your plea. 
there'll be an adjudication withheld on the possession of a controlled substance, adjudication of guilt on the possession of paraphernalia on both of these. There'll be credit for time served, so you don't serve any more time in jail. The 518 in court costs and $100 cost of prosecution, $150 in public defender fees are all payable in the next 180 days. You can set up a payment plan. It'll go to collections after that if it's not paid. Okay? Yes. Okay, good luck. Thanks. Thank you. No. Your Honor, if we could Wait, recall Jeffrey. You need to just get a score sheet in later. Your Honor, if we could recall Jeffrey Brown. Sure. He, he has, he is now in court. Okay. Jeffrey Brown. And, Your Honor, Mr. Brown is before the court on 22 CF 1911. The court previously entered a KPS for failure to appear. State would ask the court to withdraw it at this time. Court will withdraw it. Mr. He is charged with possession of a controlled substance and possession of, well, two counts of possession of controlled substance. So, Mr. Brown, with these new charges, you do have a right to an attorney. You wish to have an attorney appointed? Yes, but I'm um, in the uh, work of getting one now. But I have to work with the other one right now. Okay, so you're trying to get a private attorney? Yes, ma'am. At any point, you can substitute a private attorney, okay? okay? But for today, I'm going to appoint you a public defender. I'm going to go ahead and enter a not guilty plea so you can talk with your, figure out where you're going. We'll come back October 24th at 9 a.m. Yes, sir. Okay? 9 a.m. Which one do you want to do? Batson. We're going a little out of order because they had a lockdown at the jail, so they had to bring them over out of order. Would you go ahead and announce, Ms. Rivers? Yes, Your Honor. This is Emil Batson on 22 CF 2059. He is charged with one count of possession of a controlled substance. Your Honor, he does, I have not been appointed, but he does have an offer this morning for the single count of possession for a withhold of adjudication, set credit for time served, so if there's nothing else holding him, he would be released today. $518 in court costs, $100 cost of prosecution um, that he would ask to be payable, I would imagine, in 180 days. It is, um, it's, it's not a withhold, it's an adjudication. Okay, then I have that information incorrect. I don't want to be a convicted felon. Okay, then you can plead not guilty, we can get appointed, and uh, you can talk with Ms. Etheridge about your case. She'll be the attorney. If I do this, if I take your plea, can I get an attorney? If you, plea, if, you, if, you plea, if you plea today, this case is over. It can't be reopened? No, not normally. So if you want to talk to an attorney, that's why that's what the judge would recommend. That's what I would recommend. I won't plead to it. Okay. It, would be, it would be an adjudication. It, okay. would be, it would not be withheld. It would be an okay. adjudication. Okay. So, so you would Mr. Batson, you do have a right to an attorney with this new charge. you wish to have an attorney appointed, you're going to hire private counsel. Uh, Your Honor. Um, no, 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 no. Don't argue the case for me. Just uh, let's take one thing at a time. I'll let you talk here in a second, but let's get through the procedural part of it. Do you want an attorney? Uh, no, not forcing it on you. know, I've taken an attorney. I mean, no, sir. I mean, if, 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 if it means that I'm going to go back to jail today and not be able to get out, then no, I, I, I don't want to do that. <laughs> I'd rather not. I, I mean, this, this 
is important to me because it makes me a convicted felon, and, I, and that that's important to me. And I, and I understand that it's a mere proximity is. case, so I don't don't talk about that. You're scared of it. You know, um, Your Honor, that's, why you, that's why you have an attorney to argue your case and to fight for it. If you think you need that, then go ahead and accept an attorney or hire your own and, you know, fight to I could get an OR bond. Uh, Hold on a second. With Your Honor, according to the score sheet, he has numerous prior felonies. There's grand theft, there's forgery, there's a felony worthless check. So that is the reason why it is an adjudication offer and a prior possession. That's just that's the information that she has. Yes. Well, and, and again, an attorney can look at it. Okay. All right. So I think the judge wants to clear that up with you, okay? He's saying he wants to. He says he wants to accept the offer for the adjudication, time served, and court costs. All right. So just sign right there. And then today's date. It is nine eight. See the score sheet shows mm -hmm. attach a tag, Dwellers, those are misdemeanors. It's got forgery that's a felony, a grand theft that's a felony, a possession of cross substance that's a felony. So that's that's the information she has for you. Okay. Sign right here if that's if you want to accept this today, you'll sign right there. Right here? Yes, sir. Uh, is that the score sheet? Yes. That is, Your Honor. My dad has the same name as me. I'm not sure if that's me or him, but Junior. So, Mr. Batson, I need to ask you a few questions just to make sure you understand what you're doing here. Would you raise your right hand? Do you swear or affirm that the information you're about to provide this court? Yes, sir. The truth and nothing but the truth, so help you God. Yes, sir. Okay. Just want to make sure that this you understand the plea and that it's free and voluntary. So yes, sir. You've had a chance to review the, the, uh, the plea agreement, and I see that you've signed the plea agreement. Yes, sir. Okay. Do you, are, are you comfortable? Do you understand it? This is uh, credit for time served, and this will be an adjudication of guilt. Yes, sir. Do you understand that? Yes, sir. You were questioning, I, I you know, Unfortunately, I could hear what you were saying. You were questioning the issue of it, but you you do understand that it is an adjudication of guilt because of the information the state has on your prior record, or what they believe is that they they're only offering the adjudication, not a withhold. Do you understand that? Yes, sir. Can you understand that as a legal consequence, and you know you you raised it with the with the attorney. Yes. So. Have you had a chance to, to review this plea and sentencing agreement? I think you signed it. Are you comfortable with it? Yes, sir. You understand what you're doing here today? Yes, sir. And is your plea here today free and voluntary? Yes, sir. Okay. Based upon that testimony, the court will accept your plea. Uh, it'll be an adjudication of guilt. You'll get credit for time, sir, which means you can get out immediately. $518 in court costs, $100 cost of pre uh, prosecution, $150 public defender fee. How long does he have to pay those? 180 days, Your Honor. Okay. You can get a payment plan with the clerk if you need more time. And ask to talk to court. Yeah. Somebody else. Okay. Osmani if they have Bonilla. Need to fix it, they will. But this is your copy here. If you want that, that's just the additional charges. One of Miss Etheridge's Bonilla. Number four. I apologize, Your Honor. Bonilla Osmani. Yes, it's a out of state fugitive. Yes. yes. My hair, sir. Would you go ahead and announce the case? It's 22 oh, CF 1933. He is currently charged with fugitive from justice. The state is inquiring as to whether he's going to waive extradition. The state will announce a null process if he is waiving extradition. Did you want to waive extradition to go back to the state that, that's charging you? I don't understand that, sir. You need an interpreter? Yes. Okay. What language? Spanish. Okay. Uh, 
Um, I don't know if we want to pass him for now and see if we can we do language pass line. Him. I don't know um, if we can do language line this morning or if we need to reset to, in order to uh, have an interpreter present. Do we want to put it on for 929? You know, 929, we can even do it, you know, next week. You know, we're coming. Yes. We've got something in the afternoon on Monday. Week. We could do this first thing in the afternoon, maybe at 130 Monday. Perfect. And then we, we need an interpreter. We'll try to make that request. Thank you, Ron. Thank you. Back with an interpreter. Monday. Is I can there anybody in the jail that can explain it to them a little um, bit? They need, okay. need an interpreter. That will happen Monday. Go back to my country work. But I'm waiting in jail. I'm not your attorney. Your attorney can Cutter Ford. I'm going to go ahead and email Sarah. That's, he's in jail. What's that? Okay. Well, I appreciate you letting us know. Is the state aware of that? Your, there was an issue where we're, 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 we need to get him out here. Ford, isn't that the next one, Marnie? Cutter yes. Ford. Yes, Your Honor. Cutter Ford. And we're going to start off just FYI, we're, I'm appointing a public defender. And then we can figure out what's going on. See if you can see if you can find that out. Right here. Your Honor, Mr. Ford is before the court on 22 CF 1928. He is charged with burglary of an occupied dwelling. I'm sorry, burglary of a dwelling while armed with a firearm and grand theft of a firearm. Your Honor, I was there for his first appearance. If you'll wait just a second, we're going to try and work with you here a little bit. But don't just shout out in the courtroom, please. Trust me. I was there for his uh, his weekend first appearance. Uh, it was brought up at that time to fellow counsel uh, about possibly getting him evaluated. And, uh, so that's that's where that's where we're at. Is there a mental health evaluation ordered at the at the first appearance? Okay. I, I I'm just going based on memory. I don't have anything in the file that shows that one was done. Okay. So here's what we're going to do. I'm appointing the public defender. I'm entering a not guilty plea here today. Ma'am, I don't, I don't know who you are, but if you'll wait around until we take a break in about in the next half hour, you can talk to the public defender and explain to him why, what's going on, what you know. We want to know what you know. That's fine. But we want to know what you know, but we got to go through the official channels. And you can't just do it by, you know, going, but we want to hear what you got to say. Okay? So we'll go for now. Okay. Thank you. You can go. Thank you. I'm sorry, Your Honor. Did you give it a court date, or what did you do? Um, yeah, we, we know we're going to continue it just through the regular cycle, but there may be some. 
may need to deal with it in advance of that, but it's just a regular continuance at this point. Yeah. In, is, is that the next one, Mark? Hint, Hinton? Actually, it's supposed to be Hawkins. If it's Hawkins, you can do that too. Fine, let's bring out whoever you got, bring them out. Black shear. Black Morning, Mr. Blackshear, or good afternoon. Would you announce? Yes, Your Honor. Your Honor, this is Jerry Blackshear before the court on 22 CF 2009. He's charged with resisting an officer without violence, possession of controlled substance. Trafficking in fentanyl, trafficking in methamphetamines, and possession of drug paraphernalia. Okay, so Mr. Blackshear, you do have a right to an attorney in these uh, in these new charges. Do you wish to have an attorney appointed? You're going to hire private counsel. I guess I have one appointed. Okay, court will appoint the public defender. This is just plea day. I'm going to go ahead and enter a not guilty plea. So you have a chance to meet with your attorney and figure out where everything's going. We're going to come back on our pre-trial cycle, October 24th. So Ms. Etheridge will be your attorney. She'll come see as soon as she can, and you all can talk about bond and what you want. Who do you have next month? Cumbie. Cumbie. the Etheridge case, Mr. Gibbs, State, Justin Cumbie. Yes, Your Honor. It's Justin Cumbie. He is on 22 CF 2019. He is charged with domestic battery by strangulation. I can have just one moment, Your Honor, while he signs. Right there for me. Let me make sure I got it. Yeah, 24 months. Okay. <coughs> if you would please, today's date, uh, September 8th, 9th. Yeah. <coughs> Signed over here. Yeah, that's just your copy of the official charge. Questions about this? I may approach your honor, plea and score sheet. Thank you. Mr. Gibbs, would you go ahead and announce the plea agreement? Your Honor, uh, Mr. Cumbie, has, as you can see, has just signed the written plea agreement. He would be adjudicated guilty of the charge and play, be placed on 24 months of probation, during which time he would need to pay a $100 cost of prosecution, $150 public defender fee, $767 in court costs, uh, under, uh, perform 24 hours of community service, undergo a batterer's intervention program, have no contact with uh, Ms. Terrebone. Mr. Cumbie, would you raise your right hand, sir? Do you swear or affirm the information you're about to provide this court is the truth, nothing but the truth, so help you God? Yes, sir. You, heard, you hear your attorney state the terms of the plea agreement? Yes, sir. 
And I see you've signed the plea agreement that sets forth those same terms. Yes, sir. Have you had a chance to go over it with you? Do you understand yes, the terms of this and the legal ramifications? you understand you're waiving the right to go to a trial, giving up some valuable legal rights by entering into this? You believe yes, sir, I know. it's in your best interest? Yes, sir. And you do understand what no contact yes, means? Yes, sir. Yeah. No contact means no contact. Yeah, I know. It's one-sided. If the other party reaches out to you, you're in violation. And trust me when I tell you, you violate that no contact, you'll be back in an orange suit. Yes, sir. Just want to be clear about it. I got you. I understand. Okay. Okay. Just want to be clear. I, I always hate when people come and say, if I had just known that, Judge, no, I wouldn't I have done it. With that. Okay. I, I want to make sure. So I always yeah. say it so that when it's violated, no, you can't say that in clear. front of me. I got you. Okay. I got you. Very good. So the court cost and fees. Uh, Hundred dollar cost of prosecution, PD fee, and court costs. Okay. Yes, sir. Very good. Twenty four. Twenty four months right, probation. Thank you. Thank you, Judge. Deputies, Your Honor. Yes. Does the fact that he's going to have to pay for his own batteries intervention program, we request the supervision fees be waived. Thank you for reminding me. Yes. Can I get that? 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 You need the spelling. I've got it up here. You got it, Mr. Gibbs? Okay. Edwards. Edwards. Shelly Ann Edwards. Yes. I'm sorry. The podium, ma'am. I'm sorry. Stand at that podium, ma'am. Sorry. Would the state announce? Hold on just a second, ma'am. Yes, Your Honor, this is she <coughs> Shelly Ann Edwards before the court on 22 CF 1969, in which she I've is... I've got 1951. I've got two, Your Honor. Oh, you're right. I've got the other one, too. Yeah, I've got 1951 and 1969. Okay. 1969 she is charged with two counts of battery upon law enforcement officer and on uh, 22 CF 1951 she's charged with battery on a jail employee very good ma'am with these new charges you do have a right to have an attorney appointed you wish to have an attorney appointed are you going to hire private counsel Attorney appointed, please, sir. Okay. The court will appoint the public defender. And right now, ma'am, I'm going to go ahead and enter a not guilty plea on your behalf. That's what today's hearing is, just to enter a plea yes, so sir. that you can have a chance to meet with your attorney and kind of figure out what's, you know, how this case should proceed, okay? Yes, sir. Okay. Thank you. So we'll go ahead and set it for the standard pretrial docket on October 26th. Hawkins, Hawkins, Hawkins. You need to write it down. Jermaine Hawkins. Hawkins. Send that to her in the in the jail mail. Did the state announce? Yes, sir. All right. Before the court is 22 CF 1957, in which he's charged with two counts of possession of controlled substance and one count of drug paraphernalia. Then we have 21 CF 1717, violation of probation. So for, to be clear, that was transferred up here? And yes. Okay. okay. How do you wish to plead? How does your client wish to plead, Mr. Gibbs? Your Honor, um, since the VOP was just transferred up here, I think he would need to plead not guilty today, and we can leave this on... Uh, the October 26th docket. Very good. <coughs> Set it for the pretrial October 26th. It's coming up here. Ms. Etheridge will have to take she can talk with you about how, how to try to resolve the case. Yeah. That's just your official copy of the charges. I've got, what do you, what name? 
Hinton. That's my uh, 18. That's all right. So would the state announce or defense? Your Honor, Tim Gibbs for KC Etheridge on behalf of Taya, Taya, how do you pronounce it? Taya, Taya Hinton. Uh, I've got two cases judged, 22 CF 1982, 22 CF 1983. Um, we're pleading not guilty today, so you can talk to Ms. Etheridge, okay? Your Honor, we're, may we approach? Certainly. May. So, Your Honor, I believe uh, Ms. Rivers has uh, informed us that on 19, or 22 CF 1982, the state would be an, uh, agreeable to an ROR bond in each charge in that case. Um, does not affect the bond in 1983. That bond still remains at $75,000. She can certainly file a bond motion and speak with Ms. Etheridge about that to file a bond motion uh, for a later date. So for the two charges in 1982, the court will... will uh Revise the bond for an ROR bond in both those charges, and the 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 bond will remain the same in 22 CF 1983. And uh, so I understand on 1982 the information has not been filed, so we should continue this. Yes, Your Honor. Continue the arraignment, and then how does she wish to plea on the the assault charge on 1983? So she's still she then turned not guilty plea this morning, Your Honor, or this afternoon, Your Honor. And do we you want to come back on the on the arraignment on 1982 to the next arraignment date, or just we could push just, it out to like 9:29. Okay, we we'll just how about yeah 9:29. That's fine. September 29th in the p.m. So now your you bond is just on this case at seventy five thousand. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you very much. Kunz. Kunz. Jason. Jason Bryan. The state announced. Court in 22 CF 2066 and 22 CF 2067. They filed information in each case with one count of unlawful use of two-way device and one count of using computer to facilitate or solicit sexual conduct. I believe PD has been appointed. That's correct, Your Honor. Tim Gibbs for Casey Etheridge on behalf of Mr. Kuntz. I'm going to recommend Etheridge is. She'll come talk to you soon. We'll enter a not guilty plea this afternoon. We'll enter a not guilty plea. We'll come back for, keep it on the schedule for pretrial October 26th. She'll come see you soon. Keep it October 26th. Okay. 
Yeah, I'll write that one out. Just go down, last, last, last strafe. Stay, go ahead and announce. And that's my plan. It's a failure to register as a sexual offender. State has filed. Tim Gibbs on behalf of Mr. Lestrap, covering for Mr. Russell. Uh, we're going to enter a not guilty plea today. Court will enter a not guilty plea and come back for pretrial October 26th, 9 a.m. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you. Christopher Mr. Matthews. Russell, see you as soon as he can. Judge, this, this is 22 CF 1948. Mr. Matthews has been charged by information with one count of possession of controlled substance and one count of paraphernalia. Tim Gibbs for Mr. Matthews, uh, covering for Mr. Russell. We'll enter a not guilty plea today and leave this on for pretrial. Very good. The court will enter a not guilty plea, pretrial October 26th. Thank you, Josh. Thank you. Russell. Okay. Judge, I believe Ms. Russell's case was an add on. This is 22 CF 2010. I believe there's a plea. Let me see this. Okay. Come on, Russell. Okay. I'm Charles from the public defender. And Ms. Russell has been charged by information with giving a false name or identification to law enforcement and uttering a forged instrument. It just seems like it's just a... I'm already. Okay. Do you want to take this over? Yeah. Okay. Judge, uh, defendants, um, Agreed to take the offer from the state. It was presented to her earlier. She's just going to execute it. Detail it for me, the plea agreement, for the record. Okay. If you want me to approach or do you want me to just read it, what it is right You can read it first, and then okay. you can Because this is the only copy I have. Okay, please. For uh, count one would be a false name, Leo. Um, the, the
the, uh, the charge is going to be adjudication of guilt. It's going to be 75 days Okaloosa County Jail. It's going to be concurrent with the other charge or with any. Uh, credit for time served. $100 cost of prosecution, $150 public defender fee, 415 uh, court costs, and it would be the same for both counts. Uh, count two is uh, uttering a forged instrument. And how long does she have to pay after she gets out? She can have 180 days. Would you put that on there? Or it'll go to collections. <coughs> Ma'am, would you raise your right hand? Do you swear or affirm the information you're about to provide this court is the truth, nothing but the truth, so help you God? Yes, sir. That is good. the state's agreement, Judge. Okay, thank you. And, uh, thank you. And you're in agreement with the score sheet? So, ma'am, you can put your hand down. Ms. Russell, you heard your attorney state the, the terms of uh, your plea agreement. Yes, sir. Is that your understanding of what the plea agreement is? And yes, are sir. you in agreement with that? Yes, sir. I'm seeing that you're, you signed the, the back page of this written <laughs> plea agreement. Have you been able to go over this agreement yes, with your attorney to make sure you understand the terms of the plea agreement? So there's a lot of other stuff contained other than just the terms of it. Yes, sir. In uh, there, they come see me at the jail already. Okay. So you have you feel like you you have a good understanding and that you can enter this freely and voluntarily. You understand you're waiving some valuable legal rights yes, by entering this the trial and yes. contest all that. You believe it's in your best interest to yes, do sir. that? Yes, sir. Okay. Very good. Based upon that, the court will accept your plea, sentence you to 75 days in the county jail. You will get credit for time served. Um, it'll be concurrent with the uttering the forged instrument, which is just, and that's, you're already getting credit for time served, but you're not having to serve anything additional in that. Then the fees and costs have 180 days to pay it. If not, it goes to collections. Okay? Thank you. Spears, Krista Spears. Okay. Yeah, the the. Um, it was already written. Please already been entered. Yes, sir, and it's already set for the twenty. 26, I think. Sorry, the VIPs are set for the 29th. So. We didn't get that uh, communicated to us. Okay, Dudley. I think I did you see you have Miss Dudley charge. having appeared now. Yeah. Okay. So we'll come back on pre-trial on the 26th. Okay. So. okay. You're here on, you've got another, you got one other case. I have two more. On, on, the, on, on this, on the 2 o'clock, that's what I thought. Strangeland? Strangling? What do you think? We'll ask. Marina? You know how to pronounce it, Counsel? Strangeland. How do you pronounce your last name, ma'am? Stangland. Stangland. So this is 22 CF 1968. Um, the defendant's been charged with one count of uh, fugitive from justice. Okay. Um, ma'am, you do have a right to have an attorney appointed in this case. I'm good. hold on a second. So you want an attorney appointed? No, no, sir. no. Are you? Go ahead. Judge, we just need to know at this point. I don't know if you've already waived extradition or not. No, ma'am, I have not. You have not. Okay. Are you wanting to waive extradition? Or are you? Yeah, I mean, I've already signed for them to come get me. Okay, so you have signed to that. The thing waive, you signed to get them yeah. to come get you is. Is actually a waiver of extradition. Okay. Then yes, I already so signed it. Sorry. You're you're comfortable doing that? You need any any legal questions answered regarding that? No, I'm um, already spoke with my attorney in Alabama. I'm just waiting for them to show up so I can be okay. transported. We just need to have a, like a status or something. We can judge. I would just ask that that status not be set until after November 5th. If it, it says that she is serving a local sentence until that date, that's her anticipated release date. So um, anytime after November 5th for a status hearing, they can't come get her until she's done with her charges, uh, her sentence here. So why don't we say December 1st? We'll just have a status on December 1st. Hopefully by then you'll be gone. By then. Be gone by then. 
The morning, sorry? the morning or the afternoon? A.M. Thank okay. you. Thank you. 9 a.m. Okay. Thank you very much, ma'am. Thank you. Okay. Let's back up and see what we got here. <clears throat> Page Galbraith. State announced, please. Yes, Your Honor. Page Galbraith, 22 CF 2014. The charge is possession. Charge is possession of controlled substance and possession of paraphernalia. Judge, we were able to, even though we weren't appointed yet, uh, we were certain that we'd be appointed. We were able to get a agreement uh, offer from the uh, state, and we were extended this offer to her. She appears to be uh, wanting to take this offer, so we're just executing it. Gail Brith, I just need to ask you a couple questions. Would you raise your right hand? Do you swear or affirm the information you're about to provide this court as the truth, nothing but the truth, so I hope you got it. Yes, sir. Just want to make sure you understand what you're doing. It's free and voluntary. So you... Heard the, the, well, we need to go over the terms. You just signed something, but I want to hear what it is first. Would you announce the terms, Council? Yes, Judge, I will. She's charged with uh, a count of possession of controlled substance and a second count of possession of paraphernalia. The offer is a withhold adjudication on count one, uh, would be credit for time served doesn't have a list of days that she was in there, but it was just credit for time served. It's a withhold. Uh, $518 court cost, $100 cost of prosecution, $150 public defender's fee. Count two would I don't be... I you've been appointed yet, have you? The, we don't have the... Have to do that's the fine. 150. That's fine. Uh, adjudication withheld on count two and would be uh, credit for time served on that one as well. And I do have a score sheet here. Very good. So, oh, ma'am, did you hear all that? Yes, sir. Okay. Have you signed it? <coughs> she signed it. I just want to go to the score sheet. The score sheet says you're at 16. Okay. Okay. So, so you, heard, you're, you heard your attorney state the terms of the plea agreement. Basically, you'll get credit for time served on both counts. Yes, okay, sir. Which means you don't have to serve any more additional time. You will have to pay these court costs and fees, and obviously there will be a withhold of adjudication, which does have, you know, impact on your record, et cetera. So you understand all that? Yes, sir. Is that your understanding of what the plea agreement is? Yes, sir. And you feel like this is in your best interest to enter into this? And you understand you're waiving the right to go to a trial? and you Yes, sir. Give that up. Okay. Any questions concerning this plea? Okay. Based upon your testimony, the court will accept your plea. You get credit for time served on both counts, withhold of adjudication, and then the court costs. Right. You'll have 180 days to pay, and then it'll go to collections. Right. Okay? Thank you, sir. Thank you. On the, on the pleas, yeah, we got to put how long they have to, to pay for it, just so we're clear if we can. Um, Harris, Jacques, Jacques, Harris, Jacques. The state announced, please. Yes, Your Honor. 21 CF 843. Um, charged with possession of controlled substance and driving while license suspended. I've got marijuana. Yeah. Is it because... More than 20 grams, so That's it's a felony. That's what makes it position. Mm -hmm. So it is marijuana, but it, because it's over 20 grams, it's technically into the That's controlled correct, Your substance. Honor. And it turns the, it and, into a And because, felony. because this case has uh, taken so long, been in the failure to appear status, the lab results have come back and have confirmed it. Okay. 22.45 grams. Mr. Harris, you do have a right to an attorney with these charges. Do you wish to have an attorney appointed, or are you going to hire private counsel? On attorney. Court will appoint the public defender. As I mentioned before, the court will go ahead and enter a not guilty plea 
so you have a chance to meet with your attorney. We'll come back on pretrial on October 26th, excuse me, 24th at 9 a.m. October 24th, 9 a.m. Make sure and get, get the contact information so you can meet up with them. What costs? Adjudicated withhold. Mr. Gibbs, can, can you give him some contact information for Your, your Honor, office? actually, we're going to try to negotiate this and I think resolve this today if I could have a moment to write down, write out that plea agreement. Okay. Why don't we, why don't we pass over it then and, and then we'll come back. Thank you, Your Honor. Okay. Devin Miller. 22 CF 1953. Mr. Miller's been charged with one count of possession with intent to sell cannabis and one count of possession of drug paraphernalia. He currently does not have an attorney. <laughs> or you do have a right, as we mentioned, a right to an attorney with these charges. Do you wish to have an attorney appointed or hire private counsel? Yes, sir. You want an attorney appointed? Court will appoint the public defender. I'm going to go ahead and enter a not guilty plea on your behalf so you have a chance to meet up with your attorney. We'll come back pre-trial on October 24th at 9 a.m. Okay? Terrence Parker. 22 CF 1726. Terrence Parker. Judge, I'm showing Terrence Parker was released uh, July 5th, 2022 on a $22,500 cash professional bond. With no response, I would ask for a KPS. If he's not in jail, of course. Court will uh, issue a no bond KPS. Alan Skinner. Okay, this is 22 CF 1949. Skinner's been charged with one count of possession of more than 20 grams of cannabis and one count of drug uh, paraphernalia. He currently does not have an attorney, but I've conveyed the state's offer. Um, he, is wish, he does agree to accept the state's offer at this time. He would be entering a plea to count one, the lesser included offense of possession of less than 20 grams of cannabis, which is a first degree misdemeanor. And he would plea as charged to count two. For both counts, he would receive a withhold of adjudication, credit for time served, court costs in the amount of $220, and cost of prosecution in the amount of $50, and he would have 180 days to pay. May I approach? You may. Thank you. So, Mr. Skinner, you heard the state attorney uh, detail the terms of your plea agreement, which I see is also contained in the in the written plea and sentencing agreement uh, is did you hear and understand that plea agreement is that what your understanding is of the agreement yes sir and you believe that this is in your best interest to enter into this because you're waiving the right to go to a trial to contest this I yes sir you, i know you haven't had a chance to really go over with your attorney but you feel comfortable enough with this that that you understand what's going on you're waiving the right to a trial etc yes, okay and you're entering into this freely and voluntarily? Nobody coerced you to get you to enter into this? No, sir. Nobody promised you anything other than what's contained in this? No, sir. Okay. Very good. Based upon that testimony, the court will accept the plea, uh, and the court will uh, have credit for time served. There will be a lesser included charge in count one to possession of less than 20 grams of cannabis, which is a misdemeanor and then the possession of paraphernalia. Both those will be withhold, and there'll be uh, credit for time served, and then the court costs and, and fees that have 180 days to pay or it'll go to collections. Yes, sir. Okay. Any questions? <laughs> no, sir. Okay. Thank you. I've got two other ones that were laid ads. A Ladarius Purdue. And this Mr. Gibbs adds uh, add-ons, I think. 22 CF 2008. Correct. Tim Gibbs for Mr. Ladarius Purdue. We'd like to enter a not guilty plea this morning and uh, set, leave this set for pretrial. 
Okay, court will enter a not guilty plea and will come back October 24th, 9 a.m. And then the last one that I have is Vernon Webb. And Your Honor, Mr. Webb is here on case number 22-2054, which is another failure to register that the state has filed on. Your Honor, Tim Gibbs from Mr. Webb, 22 CF 2054, will enter a not guilty plea and leave this set for pretrial. Very good. Court will enter a not guilty plea. will come back for pretrial October 24th at 9 a.m. Your you. Honor, we do have one thing we'd like to suggest to Mr. Webb. I do believe he has not reported to the Sheriff's Office since being released. Okay, we just want to make sure that you did. Yeah, yeah. All right, thank you. Well, actually, I've got a couple more names. I, I, they're not, not in... Stiverson, Weaver, and Westbrook. So, is is a Dana Stiverson here? Yes, sir. Okay, come forward. Twenty-two CF two zero zero seven. Miss Stiverson's been charged with one count of possession of a controlled substance. And ma'am, you do have a right to an attorney with this charge. You wish to have an attorney appointed? Yes, please. Court will appoint the public defender. Court's going to. Enter a not guilty plea on your behalf. Yes, sir. So you have a chance to meet with your attorney. We'll come back October 24th at 9 a.m. Okay? Yes sir. yes, sir. Riley Weaver. Judge, this is 22 CF 1897. Mr. Weaver was charged with one count of possession of a controlled substance, one count paraphernalia. He does not have an attorney present. However, I did convey an offer to him that he has indicated he wishes to accept. That offer is as follows. Um, count one is a lesser included offense of possession of cannabis less than 20 grams. That's the first degree misdemeanor. And he would plead his charge to count two. He would receive a withhold of adjudication on both counts, credit for time served, $50 cost of prosecution, $220 court costs, and he would have 180 days to pay. I approach with this question. You said a withhold on both. Yes, sir. I got three counts. Judge, uh, the information only contained two counts. He may have been picked up on three, but uh, okay. only Very two good. counts were charged. Okay. So has Mr. Weaver already signed? Yes, sir. Okay. So, Mr. Weaver, would you raise your right hand? Just got to ask you a couple questions. Do you swear or affirm the information you're about to provide this court is the truth, nothing but the truth, so help you God? Yes, sir. You heard the attorney state the terms of your plea agreement, and you've signed the same. Uh, the plea agreement that has those terms on it. Is that, yes, sir. Is that what you're agreeing to? Or you, uh, do you understand what, what the, this plea agreement is? Yes, sir. Okay, so you're getting credit for time served, uh, and there'll be a withhold of adjudication. You'll only be two charges. You've got, uh, so no further uh, jail or probation. You do have some fees and costs. You'll have 180 days to pay. You do understand that you're waiving some valuable rights by doing this. You're doing that. You believe it's in your best interest? Yes, sir. Okay. And uh, I had another question. Sure. I got two tickets also, and okay. for, like, I didn't have my... Fortunately, other stuff I can't I deal with sure. uh, okay. tickets in the circuit court. I just wasn't sure what. Yeah. I, I don't even know where to tell you to go. So it's one of the good things about being a circuit judge. We don't have to deal with tickets. Okay. So anything else on this case? Yes, sir. Okay. Very good. Thank you very much. Riley. Oh, that's right. Okay. Uh, West, Elijah Westbrook. Westbrook. 22 CF 2012. Mr. Westbrook's been charged with one count of trespass. One count of possession of controlled substance less than 20 grams, and one count of possession of controlled substance. He does not have an attorney, Your Honor. Mr. Westbrooks, you do have a right to an attorney, as you've heard me state. You wish to have an attorney appointed? Yes, sir. The court will appoint the public defender. The court's going to issue a not guilty plea in your behalf. We'll come back on pretrial October 24th at 9 a.m. Make sure to meet up with your attorney in the interim, okay? Does, okay? does the state have an offer today? Yeah, I do. It's it's 12 months of probation, 15 hours of community service, no trespass at Twin Hills Park, forfeit the firearm, and court costs, cost of prosecution. Okay. Thank you. Uh, we'll just... Okay. 
So I know we're uh, we're running a little late, and we've got a uh, fairly significant schedule here remaining, but we still do take a short break, and then we'll come back. Which, which one? What do you? What, which? I'm here for a plea from the this morning. What's your one? Okay. Do you want to deal with it? Go ahead. Well, let's deal with it now. We'll get that out of the way. Thank you, Lawrence. Is he just standing up, wandering around there? I, I, I some tend to do that a lot. No, no, Your Honor. Well, you, you've uh, learned that probably from your father. Get yes. the attention, right? Yeah, it's part of the job, Judge. Which case, which case was it this morning? Your Honor, this was uh, James Hughes, 20 right. CF 2514 and 20 CF 2445. You had put them special on the docket this morning, Your Honor. I understand. I remember now. And Your Honor, because of the nature of the plea, if I could read it. Absolutely. Thank you. We, we always read the police. Well, I wanted to read it to the court. No, I, I, I. Do you have two copies where I can be reading along? Um, with them? Your Honor, I only have one, and I'm un unfortunately. Your Honor, this was uh, in. This was a multi-count complaint, and the plea would be in count one, which I'm sorry, two five one four count one. The plea would be to attempted sexual battery of a victim less than 12 years old, defendant over 18 year old, which has a maximum incarceration of 30 years, $15,000 fine, no mandatory minimum. The second uh, charge that we're pleading to today would be in 20 CF 2445, count one, lewd or lascivious molestation, victim over 12 years old and under 16 years old. Defended over 18 year old, same same maximum penalties and no minimum. The um, defendant would plea no contest with the understanding that he would be charged with in 416, um, 20 years Department of Corrections, followed by 10 years sexual predator probation, to be run concurrent with 22445. Early, I'm um, sorry, standard fines and costs, no contact with the victims, must register immediately upon release. Uh, early termination for probation after five years may be available, and he has to have GPS monitoring during the period of probation. Your Honor, we have spoken with the victims. They are in agreement with this plea. They are actually present today. Your Honor, we would ask that he would be, he would be adjudicated, and we waive a pre-sentence investigation. My approach, Your Honor. Oh yes, sir, I'm sorry. And Your Honor, just to be clear, we're asking that that's the standard of no contact with the victim or the victim's family. Yeah, on both the charges. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I apologize, Your you Honor. put we on here or victims' families. Yes, sir. Well, and I'll have precise. to file the score sheet. I'm sorry. I didn't. It's okay. Do, we, do you know what the minimum is? The minimum, or, well, the maximum, Your Honor, would be the 60 years. Right. I'm not sure what the minimum is. Mr. Hughes, would you please raise your right hand, sir? You swear or affirm the information you're about to provide this court is the truth and nothing but the truth, so help you God. Yes, sir. You heard your attorney state the terms of the plea agreement, and I see that those same terms are contained in the plea and sentencing agreement, the written plea and sentencing agreement that appears to have your signature. Is it, and I assume you signed this? Yes, sir. And have you gone over this plea and sentencing agreement and the terms of it in detail with your attorney? Yes, sir. And you understand that by entering into this plea agreement here today, you're waiving some valuable legal rights, the rights to go to a trial, the right to contest this, the right to have the state prove their case beyond every reasonable doubt, 
you're you're waiving the right in most circumstances to appeal it. There's some limited situation, but for the most part, you're appealing, you're limiting the right to an appeal. Have you had all those legal and any other legal questions you have uh, answered by your attorney? Make sure you understand the full terms of this plea agreement. I don't understand everything, but I understand some of it. You That's better understand all of it or I ain't going to accept it. I don't understand the probation part. Okay. You don't understand the probation. Okay. What don't you understand? That you've got, after the, after the 20 years, DOC with credit for time served, you'll, it's followed, followed that by 10 years of sexual predator probation. What does, is that what you don't understand what that designation means as far as that type of probation? Yes, sir. What are the what are the what are the criteria of the sexual predator probation that um, I can do it or I can let probation parole? But basically, Your Honor, does there are restrictions upon I, I, where he can, I can live? Let them do it. Would that you would rather have the state do it or I'm putting Miss Miss Bossell's putting you on the spot. I can do it. We just want to make sure this defendant. Wants to make sure he's clear what he's what, what he's playing to here today. I want to make sure he's clear too. Well, it, it'll be sex. Actually, you said sexual predator, didn't you? Yes, that is correct. Okay. There won't be any specific other things on him. Of course, he'd have to register as such. Uh, there will be GPS. Would ask be a dollar a day in 20 years. I don't know what GPS <laughs> will entail, but we would still ask that it be dollar a day. We'd ask that his supervision fees be waived and with everything else. The main thing is the GPS is, is, is a big and the designation itself. Which and restrictions on where he can live, I believe. Restrictions on where he can live and restrictions on who he can have contact with. Yes, sir. Oh, yeah. Definitely. That's and have you gone over that with him, Mr. We talked about that, yes. Are you clear about what the restrictions are for you can be around? Yeah, after? but I didn't know about the other like, registration stuff. Like, they said, how many times you got to register? Or I did, That's what I didn't understand. Okay. Do you understand it now? For the most part, yes, sir. What don't you understand? I don't want it to be for the most part. There's no, this is not, it's not a close call. This is no, all the thing is, I mean, like I've heard people say, you got to register, register your address once a month or once a year or twice, twice a decade. I mean, that's what I'm saying. I didn't well, know. Well, we asked the question. Yeah, that's what I was once talking Once every six months, he has to register. Okay. However, if he moves from one address to the other, you can't wait if you moved in month two. Can't wait to the six month. He has to go register that within 48 hours. Okay. Did I answer your question? Yes, sir. Do you have any other questions regarding this plea agreement and what the terms of it are? I don't want anything because either we deal with it now or we'll deal with it later. I'd rather deal with it now because you got, you got freedom. You don't have to enter into this. We can clear everything up here today. It's important that you enter into this knowingly and freely. <coughs> Yes, sir. Nobody's forcing you to do this. As a matter of fact, I'm going to ask you that. Did anybody coerce you to get you to enter into this plea here today? Did anybody promise you anything other than what's contained in the agreement? <coughs> and why are you entering into this plea here today? It's a serious, obviously a serious plea. Well, I just think it's the right thing to do at the time. Is there a factual basis for this plea? Stipulate. Yes, Your Honor. There is one clarification I don't want to be clear on. As a sexual predator, it's actually a four times a year registration instead of two, sir. Okay. Does that change your position? Okay. Your Honor, the state is not aware of any DNA evidence that it would exonerate the defendant. Either. Okay. Thank you. Very good. Mr. Hughes, based upon... Your testimony here today and the, the written plea and sentencing agreement, the court will accept your plea. No contest. There will be an adjudication of guilt on both counts. And you will be sentenced to 20 years in the Department of Corrections, followed by 10 years sexual predator probation. And this, both of these cases will be run concurrent. That means they'll be run at the same time. They're not stacked on top of one another. So it's a total of 20 years, credit for time served, followed by the 10 years of sexual predator probation. Uh, there will be, importantly, no contact 
uh, with the victims or with the victim's family, okay? It's one-sided contact. Even if somebody tries to contact you, you're in violation. And trust me when I tell you, if you violate that one, that, that, that those, are, those are the kind of violations that, that probably don't get a second chance. So don't, if you're out on probation, don't violate that. So no contact with the victim. Do you understand that? Yes. Okay. And you must register immediately upon your release. Correct? Yes. Any questions concerning any of this in your plea here today? Okay. Thank you very much. We'll expect the... the Take care about the closed business, John. There you go. Your Honor, I have two pleas that I can submit to the court this morning or this afternoon, Mr. Harris and Ms. Stiverson. Okay. Mr. Harris first. Okay. Your Honor, Tim Gibbs from Mr. Jaquez Harris, 21 CF 843. He has executed a written plea agreement if I may approach. Okay. Thank you. There's two counts there on both counts. He would have a withhold of adjudication, and he would be sentenced to time served, uh, be ordered to pay $100 cost of prosecution, 515 in court costs, 150 public defender fee due within 180 days. Very good. Mr. Hurst, would you raise your right hand? Do you swear or affirm the information you're about to provide this court is the truth, nothing but the truth, so help you God? So you got the, both counts, driving on a suspended and possession of marijuana. Um, you will get credit for time served on those. This possession is greater than 20? Yes, that's an adjudication? It's adjudication withheld, Your Honor. Okay. So adjudication will be withheld on both of these counts, uh, and then you'll serve um, with the fees and costs that are due 180 days. So you went over, I saw you met with your attorney. Did you get all your questions answered about that? You understand you waived the right to go to trial? Yes, sir. Giving up some rights to do this. You believe this is in your best interest? Yes, sir. Okay, and you've had all your questions answered by your attorney? Yes, sir. Okay. Based upon that, the court will accept your plea, um, sentence you to credit for time served, the pleas and costs that will be paid in 180 days. Uh, there will be a withhold of adjudication on both counts. Okay. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you. So go talk to the clerk if you want to pay the plan. We need go a court sheet. clerk if you want to pay the plan. In greater I than a felon? You're not convicted, yeah. I did you can just, if you just get it to me, that's fine. What's the other one we have here? If you get an Iverson. Attorney, Iverson. Ms. Iverson. 22 CF 2007. Very good. Yeah, we have an executed plea agreement, if I may approach. You may. And it's to a misdemeanor. Thank you. Would you state the terms of the agreement, Mr. Gibbs. Your Honor, uh, she's currently charged with possession. Um, that charge is going to be reduced to the misdemeanor charge of possession of paraphernalia. She would be uh, <clears throat> sentenced to credit for time served on an adjudication of guilt with a uh, $50 cost of prosecution, 220 in court costs, and a $100 cost of public, uh, public defender fee due within 180 days. Is possession of paraphernalia a lesser included to possession of a controlled substance? It can, Judge, if we make an or tennis motion just to lesser include it. Okay. Certainly no objection. Very good. Mr. Iverson, would you raise your right hand? Do you swear or affirm the information you're about to provide this court is the truth, nothing but the truth, so help you God? Okay. Heard the terms of the plea agreement. Just want to make sure you're, you understand it. You're entering into it voluntarily. So the lesser included, possession of paraphernalia, you get credit for time served, fees and costs payable in 180 days, or goes to collection. That you're understanding, you understand you're waiving the right to go to a trial, and even though this uh, th this is an adjudication of guilt, correct? Yes, sir. Okay, so it is on your record. You understand that and the legal ramifications of that? Yes, sir. Okay. Nobody promised you anything or threatened to course you to get you to enter into this plea? Okay. Based upon that, the court will accept your plea of the lesser included possession of paraphernalia, get credit for time served, cost and fees pay in, payable in 180 days. Or goes to uh, collection. Okay. Thank you, Ron. Good luck. Good luck. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. So, 
can we take a short break? All right. All rise. All rise, please.
Let's begin with uh, Dion Sanders. Dudley. I think the state's waiting for one of the officers that's an issue in the motion. If we could just pass it for a little bit. What is, what is this motion? It's a motion to compel, Your Honor, at the depositions on this case. I thought it was for a motion for an early plea. No, motion to compel. Okay. Okay, well, let's pass over it. Yes. <laughs> okay. okay. When was the motion to compel filed? August 23rd. Thank you. Now let's let's go ahead. I think we'll I'll tell Mr. Thomas. Mr. Rivers, are, you, are we going to try and go or you want to wait a little bit? Okay, so we can return her. So, Cordell Thomas. This is listed as an evidentiary hearing. He was set without subpoena, Your Honor. I just had court somewhere else, so we just set him at this time since I'll be here. So okay. I was going to be here this time. 19 CF 1045. Your Honor, we're just asking for continuance today. No objection. Okay, so we're going to. We just set it for the 29th, Your Honor. I think the afternoon. How how bad is October six? We just said it in the morning. I don't. It's not. This is not going to be a hearing. We're just going to see if we can work it out. It's still 29th in the morning. Is jammed. Without subpoenas. Okay. Let's do October sixth. Yes, sir. In the morning. I think that's all you got, Ms. Dudley? On this one. Um, let's jump over a couple of the... Uh, of the sentencing, the longer ones. Stephen Steele. Gibbs. Then there were add-ons for Kevin Rogers, Destiny Sanders, and Otis Terry. Yes, Your Honor. I had asked to add those. Mr. Rogers and Ms. Sanders are both pleased. Mr. Terry is a bond hearing. I'll allow those to be added on, but they're going to be added on at the end. I'm not sure we're going to. We, we've got some. We've got some. You know, if we can get them, you know. Understood. We'll try and. Do the best we can. I just don't want to shortchange a couple of the, some sentencing, some important. Here, are Tim Gibbs, uh, coming for Mr. Charles Russell in 20 CF 331 uh, on behalf of Mr. Stephen Steele. Your Honor, due to Mr. Uh, Russell's injury, we're going to ask to continue this evidentiary hearing uh, to the next available date. No objection. October 6th. Yeah, thank you for doing that. Sorry, this chance I can resurface that later. What type of cases are they? What? I 
That's three. So there's a total of five. There's four people. Those are pretty quick. Okay, let, let's do it. We can we can do it for October sixth. And if I can recall him, Mr. Steele. I think we can actually resolve this. Let me write that up, um, and we can recall Mr. Steele um, okay. for that. Jasmine Taylor. 22 CF 1303. Mayor Tim Gibbs, on behalf of Ms. Taylor, if I can approach with a written plan, of course. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. I'm going to announce the plea, Mr. Gibbs. Your Honor, Ms. Taylor is entering a plea this uh, morning, or afternoon, I'm sorry. Um, on both of these counts, it would be uh, credit for time served. She'd be adjudicated guilty on both counts. Court costs at 4, uh, 415, or actually it would be 515 in court costs, $100 cost of prosecution, $150 public defender fee due within 180 days. Okay. That's the state's agreement. Very good. Ma'am, would you please raise your right hand? Do you swear or affirm the information you're about to provide this court is the truth, nothing but the truth, so I help you God? Mm -hmm. Mr. Gibbs, would you, while we're going over this, would you just put the 180 days? Oh, yes, sir. I just want to make sure she's clear on that. It goes to collections. Ma'am, you heard your attorney state the terms of the plea agreement. Is that your understanding of what the plea agreement is? Yes. And I see that you have, the, the terms are also contained in a written plea agreement that I just want to make sure you've gone over that with your attorney, made sure. I just want to make sure you had all your legal questions answered. Some of this stuff can be fairly technical, and I want to make sure you understand the legal ramifications of a plea. Yes. Waiving the right to go to a trial, to contest all this, you believe it's in your best interest yes. to enter into this? Okay. And this, you're entering this freely and voluntarily? Yes. Okay. Based upon that, the court will accept your plea agreement. Um, There'll be an adjudication of guilt on both counts. And you will get credit for time served. There'll be, uh, and which means you don't have to serve anymore, no, no probation. There will be uh, 515 in court costs, 150 PD fee, and $100 cost of prosecution. And it'll be due any time. You can set up a payment plan in 180 days. If not, it'll go to collections. Okay? Any questions? And does the defense have any issues with the score sheet? No objection, Your Honor. Okay. Thank you very much. And then I think there may have been a KPS judge. We would just, of course, ask that be recalled. No objection. Is there a K yeah. Okay, thank you. All right, thank you, Your Honor. Thank you. And if there was an FTA, no action on the FTA. Okay. Thank you. Oh, where are we at on the motion to compel? Your Honor, I am waiting for Deputy Kill to arrive. Uh, Deputy Howard has already go, arrived. That's fine. We can go over it. We can skip over it. I believe we were going to do steel and then... I'm going to write up that written plea real quick. We've got the two sentences. You want to wish to proceed, Matthews? Uh, excuse me, Morrow, Shane, Matthew, Morrow. Good afternoon, Your Honor. Randy Ethers, on behalf of Mr. Morrow, I'm prepared to proceed with Mr. Morrow's case. Thank you, sir. Just for the record, as we set everything up, the court has reviewed the pre-sentence investigation report. 
as well as the the uh, score sheet and the other documents that were attached. Uh, just, uh, and the states states uh, their recommendation as well as a letter from Jonathan Paul Morrow, uh, the defendant's brother. Now, Randy Etheridge appearing on behalf of Mr. Shane Morrow, cases style 2024 2022-0273 and a violation of probation charge from Santa Rosa County, case style 2021-2998. Upon conferring with my client, Your Honor, uh, we just have one objection to the precinct's investigation. Uh, actually, is to the score sheet, and that is the scoring of unlawful use of a, a two-way device in the commission of a felony. There's two counts there noted, and I think that those. Where, 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 where are you uh, referencing? Where on the score sheet? It's on the additional on the back. Three point it results in three point six total points, Your Honor. I believe that's a double jeopardy issue. Uh, I brought this up to the state several weeks ago. And I, thought they had conceded that. It's not going to make a huge difference, Your Honor, in the matter of points. Uh, if the court does uh, delete that 3.6, it would result in a total of 249.6 total sentence points. Other than that, Your Honor, I have no legal cause why the court should not proceed to sentencing. And speaking to my client, how long did you... Hold on. Let's deal with that. Yes, sir. Your Honor, at the time that the defendant pled, they did announce a pled as charged. If that was a misunderstanding, the state has no objection to deleting that one count and making that adjustment to the score sheet in order to proceed. Okay. We appreciate Fair that, question. John. So the, the state will, will agree to reduce the total sentence points to 249, did you say? 249.6 by my math, Your Honor. Okay. And, that and I appreciate that, John. What, that, what does that equate to as far as the effect on the lowest permissible prison sentence? Be 90 years then, Your Honor? It would be five years less. I'm sorry, the, uh, the maximum, it would be 90 years. I, I got the maximum. It's the, the lowest on the score sheet based on that reduction. A minor amount, but I just want, I'm trying to get it for the record. I don't have a. 249.6 minus 28. Yes, sir. One sixty-six point two, Your Honor. I concur, Your Honor. Very good. And Your Honor, I wanted to note that was more my oversight than uh, uh, the state's. I should have caught that at the time we entered the place. I apologize right. to the court. As long as, as long as we get it right, we're trying to trying to get it right and be fair. And Your Honor, in speaking to my client, I know the court has previously ruled on a pro se motion uh, to withdraw a plea that he filed. Uh, he has indicated to counsel uh, just prior to us appearing before Your Honor this afternoon that he has some uh, issues that he wants to bring up and place on the record. They're not necessarily my issues. Uh, I'm prepared to go forward right now, but Mr. Morrow has asked for the opportunity to uh, address the court concerning uh, what he perceives as legal concerns with the proceedings. Okay, I'm, 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 you've, you've lost me. So we're not having a sentencing hearing now. He's arguing against having this. I'll, I'll let him speak to the court, John, because I'm not quite sure what he's asking for, quite frankly. As an officer of the court, I feel it's something we need to make a record of. Mr. Morrow? Yes, John. Would you please raise your right hand? Do you swear or affirm the information you're about to provide this court is the truth, nothing but the truth, so help you God? Yes, Your Honor. Anything you say can use it, be used against you. You understand that? Yes, Your Honor. You understand this is being recorded? Yes, Your Honor. You know, do we, you wish to address the court? Yes, Your Honor. Uh, first off, I I've, was doing some case law, and unfortunately I don't have the paperwork with me to help uh, support my, my facts, but... Uh, I believe that there's also double jeopardy with the solicitation and the travel to meet charge. Uh, I, I'm, I am aware that there's three uh, fictitious victims in this, but um, from my understanding that there's four solicitation charges and the travel to meet, and from my understanding with case law states that for the travel to meet charge to have occurred, 
you have had to solicit the the quote unquote victim. And that being said, I feel that one of the solicitation charges should also be subsumed into the travel to meet charge as well. Okay. Does the state wish to respond? Your Honor, I don't know if this is the appropriate location, but I can put on the record that Mr. Morrow engaged in extended chats for over th you know, three periods, th three days, three different people. He established on numerous occasions independent and separate PC. Um, so the case law that he's citing would not apply, but that's certainly, you know, if, if he wants to challenge it, this is really not the place, but I, I can speak from experience. The problem is, there. though, that you, you pled. I understand, Your Honor. Um, unfortunately, I am extremely ignorant to the laws and, and criminal law. You, you I had legal counsel. Yes, Your Honor. And I mean, you disagree with him. You don't think that he picked this up. He's standing there silently, which means... I'm assuming he doesn't support this legal argument. And as an officer of the court, can't argue something that you don't believe in. I'm, I'm guessing, I'm not trying to put you on the spot, but I guess I am putting you on the that spot. That is correct, John. That's why I, I indicated to the court I did not have any legal cause why we should not proceed today, but Mr. Morrow uh, apparently does. I'm satisfied as an officer of the court. I've been doing this for 36 years. I, I felt the plea was uh, well taken and it encompassed everything the state could prove. We took extensive depositions, transcribed all those depositions of all the witnesses, also transcribed some of the conversations that Mr. Morrow had with the undercover officers uh, posing as underage children as well. So I am well satisfied that the plea I entered in and two, on behalf of Mr. Morrow, uh, is well-founded. What are you asking the court to do, Mr. Morrow? We said you are you asking the court to set aside the plea? Uh, yes, Your Honor, I am. And do what? I ask for a continuance while I, I, I uh, just basically, I, I have all the facts in front of me to, to go over, seeing all my, the evidence against me, and can make a, a more better determination. Yeah, you know, if Mr. Moore wants to proceed in that manner, that's fine, but I already indicated to him and his father as well who was the person that retained me initially that, that would certainly entail him seeking another counsel, whether that be appointed or retained private attorney. I'm sorry, say that again, counsel. Uh, Your Honor, I spoke to Mr. Morrow about that earlier and told him if he wanted to proceed on withdrawing his plea, obviously that creates a reconcilable conflict with me continuing to represent him, and he would either have to get him an appointed counsel or retain a private attorney of his choice. But I'm not going to be able to go forward if indeed that's what he want, what he wants to do. At this point, what I what I, I'm uh, not struggling with, but but needing to inquire about is strictly the procedure that we're we're addressing here today. The procedure of, you know, basically him making a uh, or a tennis motion to set aside the the plea agreement, which kind of that's what I'm considering this as. Um, what are the requirements in order to do that? And should we? delay this sentencing and, or, and, and let him put something in writing or to, to fully do this or, you know, I mean, I, I, I mean, the fact that your attorney, and he's an officer of the court, he, he's not, 
he he's not allowed to argue something that that he believes is not correct under the law yes your honor we're all we're all searching to try to, to try to do that People can have different opinions about the law. Lawyers often do. Um, but the fact that, that, that he has some questions about it, as well as the state, you know, procedurally, Ms. Basso, what talk to me about or just the procedural requirements for what he's trying to do. I just want to make sure that I'm following the proper procedure. I don't want to try and shortchange him, but I also don't want him to, to kind of run roughshod over a procedure that's generally well set out. Your Honor, we believe at the time that he entered the plea, first of all, there was a written plea agreement that he had reviewed with counsel, and the court took the time to review with the defendant and his counsel whether or not he had read that, understood it, and as ascertained from the defendant that he understood what he was pleading to, the min, the max, and that the plea was in fact freely, knowingly, and voluntarily entered, and that all his questions had been asked, that he was satisfied with counsel. This was all established at the time of the plea, so therefore we believe it was a valid plea that the court accepted. Having come here today, the state at least has not heard any valid legal basis for him to withdraw that plea. He had all the, the there's the, the information that he had at the time is the same information that he has now. There hasn't been any new evidence, no you know recantation or change in evidence or anything that might have caused him to have a basis. There's been no ch no substantial change in any circumstances in the evidence. So at this point, we don't believe that we have heard any legal basis and would object to the court allowing him to withdraw. Tomorrow, um, Mr. And honestly, I, I can't dispute that, but I also have questions regarding the, the transfer to harmful material. That um, so This was originally one case, and then it got broken up into two cases, two separate cases. And in the process, uh, my discovery shows that I had only sent, or there's only five uh, pictures of myself. Um, that being said, between these two cases, it's it's now has turned into seven counts of harmful material. And so it's just questions like that that have me um, questioning if me taking this or pleading out today to possibly more charges or double jeopardy charges than what is actually, you know, uh, that I actually had committed, you know, is artificially um, trumping my, my, my score sheet or inflating it to such a degree that maybe, you know, my counsel thought at the time that the only uh, ethical option was to plea out to the courts. Uh, if, if some of these charges possibly were looked into and found that they couldn't, didn't have merit, then my score sheet may reflect, you know, a, a five-year difference, which, you know, I mean, maybe not to you, Your Honor, but to me, five years difference incarceration is, is, a, is a long time. And so I'm just I'm just trying to make sure that everything is copacetic in a sense, and and that's all. You know, for purposes of the record, each and every time that Mr. Morrow made uh, suggestions such as he's making today, I have forwarded those by way of email to the state as represented by Ms. Bosso, <clears throat> and she looked into it. I was satisfied that. Uh, the plea to which he entered, the uh, charges to which he entered a plea to were well founded and could have been established by the state should this case have been gone, have been taken to trial for jury trial on the merits. And the analysis, Your Honor, is basically whether the plea was no involuntary. Basically, what he's saying is that. I guess he's alleging somewhat of ineffective assistance of counsel, which obviously puts me in a position where I would have to withdraw if he has uh, issues about my competency or him not fully, un fully understanding the consequences of his plea when he entered it. Then you know, we've discussed this, he and I, as well as his father, discussed this at length. And my 
basically going to tell him what my uh, thoughts are from doing this as long as I've been doing it. And, and if he wanted to go forward with the same allegations he's making now, then I'm not going to be his attorney. I would have to move, as officer of the court, have to move to withdraw for any further representation from it because I don't want this thing coming back on something uh, that he alleges I did or didn't do by way of a 3850 motion down the line. So, as I told him before, he's certainly welcome to you know hire the attorney of his choice or get an appointed attorney, whichever way he wants to do it is fine with me. But I'm prepared to go forward today, and I'm well satisfied in the actions I've taken to this point. So, assuming we delay this sentencing here today, Mr. Etheridge, what are you going to, so I assume you're going to withdraw, so you're going to seek to withdraw, and I'm going to grant it, because I think it's well-founded. Um, what are you going to do at that point, Mr. Marr? Are you going to hire, hire another attorney? I'll probably just have a court-appointed attorney. I'm going to take a five minute break. All right. Please be seated. Mr. Morrow, the court does not believe that there is a legal basis for you to withdraw your claim. I don't think you've presented it through your oral motion, and the court's going to proceed today with sentencing. So, and we're, uh, with that in mind, with the court's ruling in mind, Your Honor, we're prepared to go forward. You may. At, uh, at the proper time, I don't know if the state's going to be presenting any evidence at this point. Normally, the defense will make the request to the court and any witnesses or evidence, and then we'll follow up with our argument. Uh, Your Honor, at this time, the only uh, evidence we 
way to uh, go forward on that this time is the testimony of Mr. Morrow, who has previously been sworn. Would you state your name for the record, please, sir? Shane Matthew Morrow. How old are you now, Shane? 29 years of age. Okay. Now, when this happened, right after it happened, at the time that you were apprehended by law enforcement, uh, did you comply completely with law enforcement and answer all their questions without benefit of counsel? Yes, sir, I did. Did you cooperate with them fully? Yes, sir. Were you frank, candid, and forthcoming with the information you gave to them? Yes, sir. Okay. At any time, uh, did you mislead law enforcement in any way? No, sir, I did not. And just prior to the time of your arrest, in fact, did you at least, in your mind, uh, cease what you were going to do, thought about it, stop where you were going, turn around, please advise Judge Ketchell the circumstances surrounding your actions the final day right before your apprehension? Yes, uh, so at some point during the, the traveling towards the um, the victim, I, I decided to turn around that I realized that what I was doing was um, was not right. And so I did decide to turn around. I was probably 10 plus miles going back towards the house or 15 miles from the meeting location when I was still pulled over and apprehended for the travel to meet charge. And in some of these earlier conversations with the undercover officers posing as a 14-year-old female, did you make up several excuses over time as to having flat tires and other issues, and you didn't fully uh, go through with what you were planning on doing or asserting you are going to do? Yes, so there was a lot of persuasion on the officer's end to get me to travel to meet that I had told them uh, multiple times that you know I had a, a flat tire and they responded back with, well, please don't let me down. You know, I really wanted to see you or that I already have a ride and I'm already on the way. Um, so at some point, the persuasion from uh, the inducement from the officer had had persuaded me to, to go ahead and, and get in the car and travel. Okay, I believe we earlier testified that you're currently 29 years of age. Is that correct? Yes, sir. Uh, should Judge Ketchell uh, exercise his discretion and give you the, even the minimum in this particular case that would entail just about a 14-year sentence in the Department of Corrections, which basically would make you about 43 years old at the time of your release, even if he went, uh, gave you the minimum under the uh, current guidelines. And the, as you know, the state uh, is asking for a period of probation, and the, there's the also alternative that you would be named a sexual predator as well. You're aware of the state's... Uh, Intentions in this matter, correct? Yes, sir, I am. Okay. Now, um, we've had the letter from your brother, uh, which was submitted to the judge. What kind of work do you normally do, Mr. Morrow, when you're not incarcerated? Uh, I was working at um, a junkyard or a salvage yard for the last four years. Your brother, in his letter to Judge Ketchell, talked about uh, your aptitude or uh, liking or your hobby of tinkering with mechanical things, is that what you're interested in doing? Whenever it is, uh, you're going to be released from incarceration. Uh, yes, sir, it is. But for uh, these current set of charges, how are you doing on probation on the Santa Rosa County case prior uh, to, to being charged with these new charges? I had just completed uh, nine months of community control. Do you have any problems on community control at all? No, sir, I did not. And that was a close supervision where you had to check in once a, once a week? Once a week, yes, sir. And uh, did you have any violations of any sort during that period of nine months community control? No, sir, I did not. Okay. Uh, were you also, you were also designated as a sexual offender at the time, were you not? Yes, sir, I was. Did you comply with all those requirements as required by Florida statutes? Yes, sir, I did. Okay. Now is your opportunity, it's called elocution, now is your opportunity to talk to Judge Ketchell and let him know what you'd like for him to know about you personally, your goals in life, uh, you accept the responsibility for this matter. But now is your opportunity to talk to Judge Ketchell. What would you like Judge Ketchell to know about you before he fashions a sentence 
in this particular case? I, I would like you to know that I'm a, I'm a fairly honest person and trustworthy and reliable person that I feel that the mistakes that I have have made and the poor decisions of these last uh, well this last year um, have really reflected on bad character uh, about myself but you know I, I would like to think that there's actually a lot of good that I've done in the community as well as um, as, as a person that I've I've been you know I'm an upbeat upbeat person and um, you know Prior to this happening, I was in a relationship with with somebody that had helped me. Uh, I had met her right after I had got out of prison in 2015, and me and her had just uh, split up about June of last year, right before these incidents occurred. And um, she had a son, so while I was on uh, SO probation, I was not allowed contact with her son, which in return made it real difficult for me and her to keep a relationship as that, you know, she couldn't choose me over her son. And uh, we tried to maintain a relationship for about the four years of me being on the probation. And it finally got to the point where it was just a little too much for her and I and that we had to depart from our ways. And and uh, I believe that that played a big role into um, me just getting on the internet and just reaching out to anybody that was willing to to write me back in a sense that you know I she was really my my friend my best friend my girlfriend and her son was you know my pride and joy for the last four years so or really six years but have you ever been treated or diagnosed with any type of mental health disorder uh, anxiety and depression and PTSD how long have you suffered from those maladies uh, I would say over eight ten ten years you yourself the victim of uh, assault at a younger age? Yes, sir, I was. Has that had an effect, obvious effect, on your mental health and status and perhaps led to some of the issues that you're facing today and you're about to be sentenced for? I do believe so, and I believe uh, with treatment that, you know, I can overcome my issues and, you know, the, the first part of dealing with your issues is admitting you have problems and um, unfortunately my, my statements I did make to the police were a little misconstrued but nonetheless you know I do feel that you know I have uh, mental health issues that need to be um, taken taken in consideration with you know appropriate practitioner are you amenable to such treatment? Should that be made of a special condition of any type of sentence that Judge Ketchell chooses to impose upon you? Yes, sir, I do believe so. Anything else you'd like Judge Ketchell to consider? Um, in considering if I'm amenable to treatment, I would like it to be known that uh, in 2011 when I caught my aggravated assault charge, I was given a period of... Um, anger management classes and that I had completed them and since then I had never committed another violent crime as well as um, in I think 2013 I had got caught with substance abuse and was issued substance abuse classes and I would confirm the same thing that since then I've been yet convicted or uh, failed positive on a, on a, a dirty year or a drug year analysis while I've been on probation and supervision for the last four years. So other than the instant offenses for which you violated your probation, have you fared, fared well while you were on supervision? Yes, sir, I have. Attend of the witness, Your Honor. Ms. Balsam. Uh, Mr. Morrow, <laughs> you were on supervision for a lewd and lascivious uh, sexual violation with a monitor. Were you not at the time this happened? Yes, yes, ma'am, I was. And you're not to be on the internet or have contact with minors, correct? Yes, ma'am. And that's what you're doing? Yes, ma'am. And you said that you were persuaded by the 14-year-old or the officer to come see you or to come see her, but isn't it true that in the chats you offered to come meet her for sexual contact? 
I did, yet never had acted on it at the time, no ma'am. You say you didn't act on it. Isn't it true that you actually drove in Santa Rosa up to as close to the county line as you could get before you violated? After the persuasion, yes ma'am. Isn't it true that you spent several hours actually trying to get the victim to come across the county line so that you would not violate your probation because you knew your GPS monitor would give you away? Uh, not several hours, but yes, ma'am. And you understand that was all documented in chats? Yes, ma'am. Nothing further from Mr. Morrow, Your Honor? No further evidence by the defense, Your Honor. Just brief argument at the appropriate time. Thank you, Ms. Boston. State has no witnesses or evidence, Your Honor. We do um, ask the court to consider the attached Okaloosa County Sheriff's Office Police Report in Santa Rosa County that we provided as the defense has agreed that that is the factual basis. That is correct, Your Honor. I have forwarded those. But I read them to my client earlier, and then I was afforded the opportunity by court security to give him the written copies, so we've gone over those. And the court has reviewed them as well. Thank you, Your Honor. Then we'll just be ready for argument after Mr. Rutherford, do you wish to make some final I'll be argument? brief. Uh, I know the court. Take as long as you need, sir. As, um, as Mr. Morrow indicated earlier, Your Honor, he's currently 29 years old. Even if the court saw fit to give him the bottom of the guidelines, he would be about at 43 years old at the time of his release. And the state has already, um, in their uh, memorandum to the court, indicated they're going to be seeking at least in years period of probation as a sec under sexual predator um, requirements as mandated by the Florida statutes, which are strict and the courts well aware of those. Um, I found it interesting right before we got up here, I believe one fellow, unless I heard it wrong, just pled to a sexual battery of a child under 12, uh, actual sexual battery, and he was afforded a 20 year sentence. Uh, the state today and earlier has indicated in their legal memorandum to the court that they're seeking a 30-year sentence. Uh, you know, 30 years represents something that a first-degree premeditated murder uh, defendant, if convicted, that's more than the minimum mandatory they're looking at, as well as an actual sexual battery on a child less than 12, that's 25, right there. So the state's asking for someone that was contemplating it goodness he didn't go through it and it wasn't a real child that was involved but he never did complete the act and at least according to his testimony under oath today before uh, your honor indicated that he thought about it realized what he was doing was wrong, definitely wrong uh, and turned around and made several excuses some of the other times about having a flat tire and what have you uh, obviously contemplated and I think the state had enough uh, evidence to prove to a jury at trial. That's why he didn't uh, force the state to go uh, forward with the trial, except the responsibility for what he did. He cooperated fully, you know, as soon as he got arrested, immediately he gave a full and complete confession. Um, we would suggest to the court that by doing that, uh, that could, if the court chose to do so, that would be a legal reason for departure and mitigating circumstances if uh, the defendant cooperated with the state to resolve this current offense, which is what he did, or any other offense. Because are you are you pleading for a downward departure? I, my client has asked me to do so, Your Honor. Has that been filed? Did you file a downward a motion for a downward departure? No, sir. Is that be, not required? No, sir. It could be argued orally at sentencing. Um, anyway, Your Honor, we're asking the court to consider a downward departure. The court doesn't feel that's uh, necessitated by the totality of the circumstances of this case. We would ask for the minimum under the guidelines. You know, that's more than adequate punishment for what he did. As I said, he's shown remorse for what he's done. He, com he uh, complied completely and cooperated completely without the benefit of counsel with law enforcement. Uh, so we'd ask the court to sentence him to a minimum sentence of incarceration, followed by an appropriate period of uh, probation, or whichever supervision the court sees fit. Credit for the time he has served previously. Ms. Bossa. Your Honor, 
As the court is aware, Mr. Morrow is charged in two separate cases in a violation of probation with traveling to meet a minor for sexual acts of one count, solicitation of a minor to engage in sexual acts four counts, transmission of material harmful to minors seven counts, and an unlawful use of a two-way device. Additionally, he was already on supervision for a lewd and lascivious battery, sexual contact with a minor. Um, part of that supervision was to be on a GPS monitor and obviously have no contact with minors. Your Honor, the minimum guidelines, as we've already discussed, um, are 249.6 months with a maximum of 90 years in the Department of Corrections. And based on the totality of the circumstances, of, as our letter states, we're asking for 30 years in the Department of Corrections, followed by 10 years of sex offender probation, a designation as a sexual predator as required by Florida Statute 775.21, as he was already designated as sexual offender at the time of this, we ask that the court order all statutory requirements, including treatment, no unsupervised contact with any minors. Uh, once he is on probation, there would be a requirement for a GPS monitor under the Jessica Lunsford, as the alleged victims were uh, under the age of 16 at the time. Uh, that's what we look at as the age that he's chatting with. Uh, we ask that he have no electronic devices capable of internet access and no internet access or social media. I believe the court costs are 867, but I could be wrong are on all that. All those things that you just cited, all part of the statutory requirements? Your Honor. Under 775.21? They are, Your Honor, with the exception of, we do want to point out the no electronic devices capable of internet access or no internet access or social media based on the nature of the charges. Um, that is not always included in every order, but we do ask that that be included. What were the two things? It's the no electronic devices capable of internet access and no internet access or social media in any way, shape, or form as that keeps changing. I think there is an exception, Your Honor, uh, provided for in the statute for work-related or school-related purposes. So, oh, so, I'm I'm confused. About I'm sorry about, about that issue. You just said it wasn't in the statute. Mr. Eldridge just implied there was in the statute with an with an exception for work. There can be a basis. There can be an exception, Your Honor. And one of the reasons I'm saying it is because not all the orders seem to come out that way. Even though it's a statutory requirement, it doesn't always get listed that way. So I just want to make sure that we don't leave that off by accident. Okay. Agreed, Your Honor. No further argument, Your Honor. Your Honor, um, even though those are the minimum guidelines, uh, we don't believe this is a minimum guideline case. One of the biggest aggravating factors, of course, is the fact that this individual, Mr. Mora, was already a sex offender. He already had shown an illegal and concerning interest in having sexual contact with children. He was on probation at the time with a GPS monitor, which we would hope would put the proper safeguards in place to keep the community safe, yet that was not working here. He also said he'd had no violations. Um, actually, if the court refers to the PSI, he did have a technical violation previously for a curfew violation and also one for contact with a minor. Again, the interest in minors. He can't seem to keep away from children. That's really why we're asking for the incarceration. The facts on this case, Your Honor, the chats, uh, I'm not going to go into graphic detail about what he suggested he wanted to do with these children. But he was very graphic in those chats and in the police report as to what he wanted to teach these young girls, what he wanted to do with them. These chats went on for about three days with three different individuals that we know of, but that's what he's charged with. He went on in graphic detail. He sent very explicit photos of himself, his genitalia, in various different poses to these children. He also even sent a video of himself masturbating to the child. That, he didn't even get charged with that one, but that was part of it. So, Your Honor, this is not just, hey, I'm reaching out looking for friends. He is looking for a child. He finally offered to travel to meet one of them, and then it began. He offered to come here towards Okaloosa County, up, towards, up to Crestview, which was where the meet location was, and then it went back and forth, back and forth. Hey, can you come meet me a little closer? He kept asking the young lady to come basically across the county line because he was on probation and he had a GPS monitor. He didn't want to come across. So he kept trying to get her to come back and meet him. He definitely was trying to make this happen. Perhaps he just got frustrated and left. 
But did he change his mind because it was wrong based on the totality of the circumstances, the number of children that he was chatting with, and the number of time? The state would maintain it's not because he realized what he was doing. <clears throat> As he's trying to say now, he has shown a dangerous interest in children. He was given a chance already to show that, hey, I can correct that problem. I can stay away from children. I made a one-time mistake with the LNL, perhaps. And that's and we went on probation for that. But that's not what happened. He did it again. Reached out to children, talked to children, graphic detail of what he would do to those children, sent the photos, and then went to meet one of them. Now, that, we believe, makes it more than a guideline case. This individual is a danger to children and to this community. If he is not incarcerated for a lengthy period of time, as we have asked, we are, we are in fear that he will once again put children in danger and put them at risk for sexual molestation, because that's exactly what he keeps referring back to. We don't believe that there has been any evidence presented to this court for a legal basis for a downward departure. There hasn't been any evidence of any mental health issues that he requires treatment for. I understand that Mr. Morrow has stated that, but that is not legal evidence before this court provided by a professional. Um, so we do not believe that that is a, a basis for a downward departure. We do not believe there has been any legal basis, even if the court were to find that there was a legal basis established, as the court is aware, it is a true point two-pronged test, and it must still be established that it is appropriate to do so. Again, given that he was already a sex offender, engaged in these lengthy conversations with several children, now will be a predator, we do not believe it is appropriate to do so, and we are asking that the court incarcerate him for 30 years, followed by 10 years of sex offender probation. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you. Very good. Thank you for the arguments. The court will make a couple of findings. One, begin by, by stating that the court finds that there's not a legal basis for a downward departure. The arguments that were made uh, do not form a legal basis. Um, One of the challenges that we have as judges is that we have to make very serious decisions based on relatively small amounts of information. But what I have before me is all that I've got. And what is before me is a situation where there is not a, uh, a one-time issue uh, there were multiple accounts within these various charges. And I, I will say that, the, that the, the court notes the fact that in the defendant's own arguments, he's essentially arguing that he was being enticed or persuaded by the 14-year-old to engage in these these uh, acts which were illegal even if that were the case which the evidence does not does not in my in the court's opinion prove that at all uh, but even if it was it's still an illegal act that you were very well aware of particularly because this is not the first charge. And the court finds a very significant that there was, uh, he is on probation for a previous charge of lewd and lascivious uh, with a minor. And so this is a continuation. And the court has a great deal, unfortunately, of experience 
in seeing what the backside of these kind of cases happen. In other words, what happens when there is sexual assault on a minor? You talking about life changing? Those are life changing. And I've dealt with many, many cases. So I think the state has clearly proved that this is not a minimum uh, requirements case. And the court will grant the state's request for a term of 30 years in the Department of Corrections, followed by 10 years sex offender probation. Actually, it will be designated as a sexual predator by statute as well as the other statutory requirements under 775.21. And the reason why I ask that question of you is to make sure that the order is clear, that all those things that you are requesting is contained in there, in addition to the two additional of no electronic devices capable of Internet access. And I think those were the related to having access to that. And certainly the... GPS monitor, which is required under probation, at uh, at one dollar, at one dollar a day. Honor, I do apologize. There's one thing I forgot to request is a forfeiture of any electronic devices that were seized. Yes, I think that's. I may be even required. Anything further? State, Your Honor. Thank you. There you are. Thank you. Thanks for your time, making the time available to us. Thank you, sir. Okay. We've got we've got the motion to compel and we've got the additional sentencing, correct? Correct, right, Your Honor. I think we have some pleas. I have well. we have two pleas. I have three pleas, Your Honor, as well as a bond motion. And I'm, uh, we're going to get through the main that we've got to. How long is the motion to compel going to take? Lisa, how long is the motion to Call me 10. Okay. Not fair, Ms. So at this point, I'm going to do the motion to compel, and then we need to do the sentencing. And I mean, you know, I'm, I'm going to have to. If you want to try and you know set something, you know, like for Monday, like in the afternoon when we're coming back, something. I'm and the clerk's going to be here for that Monday in the afternoon. If if we if we run out of time today, I don't mind doing that. Yeah. Um, to try to get these, because I, I know. One of the pleas my client would be released today, but we can, right. I can play it by ear and we can go from there. That's fine with me. I'm available Monday if that's the case. And I'll be available Monday. Okay. Normally I wouldn't mind going late, but. Yeah. But tonight's probably not a good night for that to happen. Okay. So let's do the motion to compel, which is be on 